Juan, the concept of information we all know, we all recognize mm -hmm. is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Yet some physicists believe that information is even more fundamental, maybe the most fundamental thing in the universe, and that everything else we see is sort of a, a manifestation. But the real reality is information. Well, certainly information is very important, especially quantum information and the differences between quantum and classical information. And that's very important. But our theories are really theories on how to constrain this information. Because when you measure something, you can get completely different answers. Now, why is it that when we measure something, we get a specific answer, a specific number? Yeah. And that's what science is about. It's about predicting the specific things we see out of the possibility of all uh, possible measurements. Right, right. And so when we talk about this information in general, we're just talking about the complete set of measurements or all possibilities. But I think that the job of the physicist or the scientist is to constrain this infinite possibility to something, some special region, mm -hmm. some find the correlations in all these possibilities. Uh, and that's what we do when we do measurements. So, so, so uh, how, how does information differ from the classical world to the quantum world? Well, um, quantum information is an object which is a little more fuzzy. So things can exist in different states at the same time and so on. While classical information is always uh, either zero or one, let's say, you can characterize it in this way as bits in your computer. Mm. Uh, quantum bits uh, can be in superpositions of, uh, of, the, of two possibilities. And this idea that it can be in superpositions is the, mo the most uh, important and perhaps counterintuitive uh, idea, that something is not definitely zero or one, it's some, somewhere mm. in between. So if the universe is uh, composed of matter and matter at its ultimate right. is quantum right. Right. mechanics right. and working by quantum theory, and if that's described by quantum information, uh, some might say that therefore quantum information is the, is, the, is the most fundamental substrate that we can deal with. Yeah, sure. And uh, that's very important. And actually, an interesting question is whether there is a, a wave function. So wave functions is how we characterize quantum information is what gives us uh, a way to characterize the information and tells us essentially what the probability of observing different outcomes is. Right. So one interesting question is whether there is a wave function or some probability set for the whole universe. So are we in a superposition of this universe we see plus some other universe with different physical laws and so on? So normally and, we think of the wave function as the yeah. probability of, 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 uh, of, of a particle, a very right. small particle right. you're saying now. That there could be a wave function of the entire universe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and in principle, there should be. So, according to the classic, to the laws of uh, quantum mechanics, there should be a wave function for the classical universe, and it contains uh, both talking, having this conversation in slightly different ways that were affected by previous quantum events and so on. It's a very counterintuitive uh, wow. idea, wow. And, it's, <laughs> and it's hard to think about it. But this is really what quantum mechanics is saying that we would be in these different uh, quantum superpositions. But, but, but can, can we dig deeper in information? Does, is, could, could, is it conceivable in principle that the real reality underlying particles or forces or strings or anything is just, is literally information, uh, uh, bits of information in a quantized mm -hmm. way? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that you need something more than purely information. You need some laws to constrain the information or some uh, laws that give you uh, correlations between different uh, possibilities. And that's what, what happens in quantum mechanics. We have uh, quantum mechanics could describe very different systems and we have to choose an evolution law. We have to choose uh, something that will determine how the system will evolve and that will tell us how measurements uh, are correlated. The alternative argument is, yep. is that it, it's not that the laws have to constrain the information, but at the most fundamental level, the information is creating the laws. Well, I, I find this hard to believe because... <laughs> <laughs> but well, if somebody has a concrete model that, that shows how this can happen, yeah. I'd be very happy to consider well, it. Well, I, I think, it's, think... It's, 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 a, it's a feeling, it's an intuition, maybe there are some good arguments, but... Uh... I mean, in, in all other situations where laws are emergent, you need the most basic law or some aspect of the most basic law to find uh, these emergence. So there's, there are emergent concepts uh, like temperature, for example. Temperature is not something we can assign to an elementary particle. Right, right, right. But it's something that we can assign to a collection of particles. Okay. Um, but this can happen because uh, of the, some specific structure of the fundamental laws. 
it, it couldn't happen if uh, I don't know energy wasn't conserved, for example. We couldn't assign temperatures. Yeah, so and, so temperatures in a, in a, <coughs> so it was an emergent. It's not a fundamental thing on its own. Right. But it's the product of, yeah. of, of law. Another interesting question is how is information stored, whether it's stored locally or non-locally. And quantum mechanics implies that information is stored non-locally. So an, a particle here can be correlated in a quantum way with a particle over here. Now, correlated in a quantum way is, uh, means the following, that if you decide how to measure an ex an, a property of an elementary particle here, um, you can decide this in different way ways, and the other particle immediately somehow knows how, how this particle was measured and aligns itself in a correlated way with the original particle. And, and there's no time for information yeah, to pass. There is, no, there is no actual signal. that <laughs> You cannot use it to transfer signals, yes. because that would be a violation of uh, the principle of relativity, that right. the signal would move faster than light. Right. But nevertheless, the quantum information is stored non-locally, so that when you make a measurement here, it's correlated with the measurement over here in a, in a precise and One deterministic way. to ask, how could that possibly happen? Well, it's uh, it's amazing, but this is what uh, quantum <laughs> mechanics implies, and mm -hmm. there, are, there are experiments uh, yeah, yeah. That, that show that this is actually what happens. Um, so, so what 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 follows from that? What can we what 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 does that teach us about the fundamental structure of of, of matter and the universe? Right. So one question is when we describe the theory of quantum gravity, where space time is also changing and described by quantum mechanics, yeah. do we have various space times in quantum superpositions and how exactly do we describe this? <laughs> is information local in space time or non-local? Well, we already saw that there is some non-locality. And perhaps one very dramatic manifestation of this is uh, by the description of quantum black holes, where um, when the black hole forms and collapses, we can describe everything that is happening in the interior by a theory that lives on the boundary. Huh. So somehow um, we uh, can have a reduction in the number of degrees of freedom. Instead of talking about the volume, we talk about the boundary. Um, and so all the information in this huge right. volume can be stored right. on the surface. Yeah, area. that's the idea. Yeah, that's right. So in a theory of quantum gravity, there is a reduction in the number of quantum bits or of in the information we need to describe a system. The, this so-called holographic Yeah, this is the so-called holographic principle. And in, holography, in, in a sense, is, is, a, is, is an idea of how to store information. You store right, in two right. dimensions and representing three dimensions. Right, yeah, that, that's, that's the ordinary optical holography. Right, so right, that's right. Uh, well understood. Right. And it's a way to take a picture of a three-dimensional object and right. store it on a two-dimensional surface. Right. Um, here, the idea is that the same applies to gravity and to everything that happens right. uh, in <laughs> the interior of some volume. Is, is there some? If that's true, yeah. I mean, is this a theory or is this, is we believe very strongly this is the case? Uh, well, we believe somewhat strongly that this is the case, but there is no experimental test that this is true right. in quantum in gravity. Well, because well, the, in order to really test it, you need, really need to test the quantum aspects of gravity. Oh. <laughs> and these have not been directly tested. But, but assume it's correct. Uh, yeah. What follows from that? If, if information of, of, of volume can be stored on a surface in, in a black hole, do, does that imply anything about the deep structure of reality? I think it implies something very interesting for the deep structure of space-time. Mm. It's just saying that space-time is uh, an emergent concept, similar to, let's say, temperature. So how, uh, huh. when we uh, have lots of particles, we can assign a temperature, and it's a well-defined mm. uh, thing where you stick out the hand uh, through the window and we see what temperature it yeah. is. Um, <laughs> and similarly for space-time, you have some particles that move in some abstract space. And uh, out of the interactions between these different particles, we have a definite space-time. Um, and the particles that give rise to the space-time live in a different dimension than the, than the space-time right. itself. And that would be, in a sense, emergent from the application right. of this information, of how information is stored. Yeah, that's right. So, well, we, we, we really need a theory of how information is stored and how information is processed uh -huh. by some quantum loss of <laughs> dynamical loss. Uh, so we need both things. Uh,